Hello everyone. <clears throat> the title of today's episode. Is. Evolving from the individual bodies of man into the collective mind of the unspeakable God. In other words, we can title this episode <coughs> The caterpillar's turn to be butterfly, to be not a butterfly, but just butterfly. <clears throat> the caterpillar opens its eyes. It is in a world where it has many legs. The world is vast. It is small. It looks at its individual consciousness and realizes that each leg has a purpose of its own. And so when we look at this world as a human being, as the human consciousness, we begin to notice <clears throat> we are present in nature's presence. And so the caterpillar is the human consciousness uh, has many identities, many legs like the caterpillar, many senses of self, whether they're past life painted or their future life painted or if they're extraterrestrial or other abstraction painted, you're going to notice that the caterpillar can make as many conclusions as it wants from being even a caterpillar, even during being a caterpillar. But the moment life takes it into that cocoon of inner silence and stillness and self-contemplation, the being begins to go through a metamorphosis of no longer being an idea bound to a certain memory, bound to a certain interpretation, but you become the freedom of your newest moment. You are free. You are free before you could not be. And that is freedom. It cannot be dominated by the past and it cannot be denied by the future. It is present before eons <clears throat> shall speak the same. There are no second class citizens. There is one mankind here. It's... it's <clears throat> Yeah, let's say it like this. There is one mankind here. It is composed of all the human beings that are on this planet. This planet is a rock spinning in the middle of nowhere. That means all our knowledge is spinning in the middle of nowhere and it was man's effort that began to individualize himself through the use of language and communication of external forms to becoming a storyteller of his own soul. What that means is we are not thinkers. We are actually voices of the mind which can in some very profound manner, divine manner, be seen as various cycles of design happening within one another. That means there is mystery in this world, but the mystery continues because there is a repetition. So most people in this life, they, they are trying to be, um, um, how would I say, themselves when they fail. That means so many times I've seen people go through failures, uh, problems, you know, all that stuff, and they're like, ah, what do I do? And then they go to some, like, you know, elder family member, or to, like, you know, or to some friend, and the friend, like, the family member is like, yo, be yourself, you know? And so, not a lot of people, when, when someone tells them to be their self, really wonder what the self means. They just think it is their name. They just think it is their face. But when they look in the mirror after their next birthday, there's going to be differences. And these differences are showing you that you thinking that you are a static idea, that you are a certain person of value, exists in the subtler planes of abstraction that is founded upon the duality of what we are considering to be thought. <clears throat> so look at how the pro... <coughs> So look at how the process of communication is occurring. occurring.
a spontaneous moment of conscious manifestation <clears throat> is using specific sounds to communicate a reality which you will never see in the same way because we're all uh, a certain viewpoint of this world. It's as if existence was this ultimate view and then it divided into segments of its own intelligence and so even though they thought they were individuals, they were permeating and pervading, uh, they were within that all-pervading field of one origin and no number needed, the realm of no word needed, the realm of no other idea that is needed aside from how your moment is beautifully, honorably, present right now in the greatness of how far our species has evolved to bring your face to towards the next cameras of this world <clears throat> do not fear life and do not fear death and do not fear fear let all concepts fade away as if they never existed for you have always been on your path to the glory of your sincere nature of your natural true self and I'm using words, but you know it before I have spoken. That is how present it is. And the focus here is, no, is on the presence beyond personality. The caterpillar, once it has gone into the cocoon, it's going to, like what happens actually, is that all the cells of the caterpillar die, and when the last cell of the caterpillar has died, suddenly the new cells of the butterfly emerge. In regards to a mystical enlightenment context, what this means is that you go into your silence and stillness of who you naturally are, you become sincere, and you accept the world as it is, and the moment you have accepted it, you are no longer bound to the way that your belief was imposing you itself on you because what we're not realizing is that after our acceptance there is availability in what we have accepted and so what that means is that if you right now expect accept that I am a great person you will come and talk to me you will come and see what am I seeing that perhaps you're not seeing if you consider I'm not a great person I will even cease I will you know slowly fade from your memory the word mr. within for example but you're going to notice that regardless of the ideology, labels, and names. I am one human being just making noise in the moment. <laughs> and so guys, you know, it's, it's like you really, you know, you're always in a good mood <clears throat> when you realize, when you realize you are the creator of the way your creation is significant to your story. Who you are is not an idea, it is the awareness to it. And who you are is not an awareness to an idea, it is a pro presence beyond the discrimination of it. And so in, in the uniformity of a peace beyond form, we will look at our politics, we will look at our society, and we will look at our civilization and we will say, why should there be peace? And then the great answer shall come. Why not? <laughs> Why not right now, just for, you know, for the sake of, you know, one, you know, just, you know, let's say we, you know, let's just assume we're all good people. And why not have the leaders, have leaders of all nations for, you know, for many, like every, I don't know, a couple times every year, you know, just get together to see how they can transcend the idea of um, <clears throat> uh, different people living on different planet, on, 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 uh, in different countries <clears throat> in uh, one planet. How should they do it? I think this is a problem that teachers should give to children. What that means in certain uh, shamanic cultures, you know, in certain ancient cultures, you see that it's as if once the young child was born, they would put the young child with the grandmother, yeah, with the grandfather or something, with the, with the senior, with the oldest person in the family, the youngest person would hang out. And some people would come and say, why is this? You know, some people fall into the culture, to that shamanic culture, would come and say, why are you doing this? And the shaman would answer, you know, and he would say, because 
One is about to enter the spirit world and the other has just uh, stepped out of it. One is about to step into it, one is about to step, one has just stepped out of it. That means one, one new consciousness has emerged. At the same time, one new consciousness that had emerged is now emerging back into what it was not. <clears throat> Do you see? We're not just crumbling bones and dirt. We are the consciousness of a universe that is breathing in one moment of its being. And that is so profound that all the poets in the world are like, how do people limit themselves in ideas that go pass away so quickly? Why are we burdened by the ideals of the past and the lack of allowance for the future to speak? O oh, children of this world, I want you to for one moment consider every human being on this planet is with you and on your side. Now, what will you do that the planet, if it was alive, would be expecting from you? You see, it's very interesting. The moment a child is given the concept of parents, it is given two, um, uh, uh, two uh, forms of reality uh, in one reality. Do you see? And it is as if the parents came together and the child came into existence and the child will go together with someone else, you know, and then another child will come into manifestation, another position of consciousness will be fulfilled. And so this cycle goes on, and in the midst we just wonder, you know, who are we? And who really these people are? My mind has at times been my enemy. It has pushed me the moments I had not expected it. It has, it has disturbed me the moments I thought I was, I was going for the glory of my destiny. But there have been moments, too, where the mind has been my friend. It has been my greatest friend. My mind has become even God for me because it has shown me that it is self-existent, spontaneous origin. And if all language was considered through being written in one moment, in one world, then there must be one God and one great soul. Do you see? That means we are all in a simulation of a reality so complex, but when we look at where the complexity came from, we cannot ignore the simplicity of our roots. We are kept in greater dimensions, but these dimensions are not uh, 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 wordable words, worlds. They are <clears throat> the transience of a sincere devotion to not act as natural, raw intelligence of your universal sector, but to realize you're always being it. You see, people think you achieve greatness. No, you are great and you realize it can be. And this is going to be hard for some people because the human being is like this, it's like we're this like biological clay that is being sculpted by the external environment and by all the influences and experiences we've been through. And so now, every person right now hearing my talk, your journey of life so far has sculpted you in a certain way, for a certain vision, for a certain awareness. Now you tell me, if we are 8 billion unique views of the world, would it not make sense if these 8 billion began in a peaceful platform, began collaborating, began integrating? The greatest ideas of the children in Japan merges with the greatest ideas of the children in, in let's say, um, <clears throat> uh, let's say Russia, you know, let's say in Italy, in France, in America, in Canada, in Iran, in Dubai, in, in many places. You see, it is one world. The language is separating it. It is one, one complex phenomena of presence and the moment we open our eyes, that is when reality and knowledge and rationality can be applied. The moment our eyes are closed, the world is unknown, but there is presence here. Because before you open your eyes, where are you? Is something here? And this is the question. Did the thought come first or man? Or, or, or the existence? I think therefore I am. No! I am, and that is why I can think. <laughs> because the nature of the thought demands an origin prior to its definition of a beginning and end. The beginnings and endings of reality stories are like curtains that once pulled will allow the light of eternity to be an actual presence. Do not judge yourself by the mind that you have now but realize 
that every moment that you are alive, everything in one moment is its own judgment by the nature of how it is present. What does a kid do when it is blamed? You know, it runs to its parents, you know, when the kid gets in trouble. And so we, as a civilization, are looking at our planet and we're like, oh, there's a bit of problems, you know, there's a bit of trouble, you know, we've caused trouble, you know, we're, we've, we haven't made this place the healthiest place for the children of our children's children to breathe in, for example. And so, in that mindset, we wonder, what is happening now? that is of an eternal quality with the, its own mission of the moment. That means there are some missions that are lifetime accomplishments and there are some missions that are instant actions where you are just thrown in a situation and life is saying, this is what I show you, what are you going to do being, and you as a being function. And you won't believe, guys, there's two ways of eradicating monsters in this world. One way is, you know, with the fist of steel to go fight the ignorance and the cruelty that should not be. And so that is its own effort. But then there's another way. There's another way before you think you're in hell, you wonder from where did the idea of hell come from? And from where did the idea of that idea come from? And so the inquiry of language, because we have given an infinite vast cosmos, can go infinitely. There can be infinitely new discoveries. So what are we doing here? You know? Are we trying to count, count the sands on the beach? Or are we trying to learn how to swim and create boats that we can travel great seas? So science's endeavor should not be to make sand castles for the biggest wallets. There is honor here, and as Rabindranath Tagore has said very beautifully, I believe it was Rabindranath Tagore, this poet, Indian poet, he said, you cannot cross the sea by, main, by merely staring at it. And so we cannot be truth if we are just staring at truth and we're like, oh, it's there, but we know I can't do it. You know, there's, you know. And I will tell you, if your ego tries to be God, you're going to see there's always a better Superman. But, if you do not ignore that you are the whole cosmos, you will see humility is natural. The compassion the Dalai Lama and the many great saints and teachers of this world have spoken about, it is meaningful. Krishnamurti, this very profound speaker, he says, I am compassion with its own intelligence. That means I am walking with not the intelligence of the ideas of human beings that are just looking at the dust on the telescope. But, in the greatness that walks in the greatness of its world, I am not great because I'm just some guy speaking, I'm some specific person. I am great because the moment of being is. Nature is the ultimate leader because it is functioning all of us within one moment beyond our individual stories of it, you know? <clears throat> the Tower of Babel is this ancient story. <laughs> the Tower of Babel. <laughs> I think I'll say it like this. The Tower of Babylon. There's a story about it, yes? <clears throat> uh, this story... All the human beings pretty much in the world get together to build the tallest tower to go and, you know, get to the gods, to get to the heavens pretty much, to get to the party, you know? <laughs> and so these human beings are building it, they're working together, and suddenly the gods see this, you know, and the gods like, yo, this is, what is this, you know? And so the gods, like, you know, I don't know who, who, who the specific god was at the time, but, like, you know... <laughs> There was, um, you know, the, uh, the gods do something that the man, a man can't speak. Suddenly the people beside one another, they can't speak to one another in the same language. The man, uh, this god gives them different languages, yeah? And so they can't build this tower anymore. So we have lost our harmony in very poetically and metaphorically in how language is making us believe in our own individual truths without realizing the greatest contribution is a collective effort. And collective effort means you need to be tolerant. You need to step out of uh, all the uh, ethnocentric holes we are put in the moment we enter this life like a comet that has, uh, t uh, you know, contacted the surface of a new world. <clears throat> the surface of a new world.
Oh, children. You are the angels of our greatest dreams. You are the greatest team that will solve the issues of this world. And you are the only ones who all the human beings that have lived so far are giving the problem to you. All of us, you know, there will come a time where, you know, <laughs> My voice may not be as loud as it is now, but I shall speak and say, O children of mankind, we have all lived for you, whether directly or indirectly, whether consciously or unconsciously. And if you do not realize that the greatness of this world is in the greatness of your vision, and the greatness of your vision is in the greatness of your healthiest vision, your healthiest body, your healthiest mind, and your healthiest world. And so be careful, because if they make the world unhealthy, they will also make the bodies and minds unhealthy. And so there must come an effort where you look in the mirror, and you look at this mirror so deeply, where a part of you, from the most deepest poetic and philosophical aspect of your existence, begins to roar and say, Who is this in this mirror? Who am I? And why has this world decided to breathe? We are all breathing greatness, we must realize it. The individual bodies and the advancement of the ape and evolution is like that caterpillar. And we're going into, we're all evolving from advanced, uh, like we're, we're moving from uh, the sophisticated advanced mouth noises of an advanced evolving ape of an advanced ape and we are evolving into the collective mind of one cosmic God presence, you know? And I say presence because the intelligence is within all of us, so all our boundaries are only real because our attention is there. Purusha and Prakriti uh, walk into the halls of this world hand held. Beyond the responsibility of choice, nature is moving all of us. Be the grace of the clarity of the soul, of the soul of soul. Science might be able to map our multidimensional nature in the future, or what will be of science and the modifications that will add themselves to science. But we must be willing to not just look at the telescope on the ground, but to pick it up and look through it. And so the next realm of actually conscious explorers of the experimentation of how this life phenomena is present, they will be uh, modern mystics. There will be people where they're like, okay, you know, I could see how this cycle is going around. And so, uh, should I just remain as the elements of a fading world that never had meaning? Or should I be the meaningful elephant, el element, <laughs> meaningful element of this world? What is the best way you can live your life? To trust the life that is being its best. I am one man speaking, but the good thing is all of mankind is here. We are not cast away in history. We are free before even we need to interpret eternity. And so how does the poet's tongue move in the silence of the cosmos? 
We are all explorers of the new world of the Lord. Truth is here and now. This song behind my talk is called Second Class Citizen, Dexter Britain. I hope this talk has served you much blessings and honesty. And you are present in the most blessed existence. It is one moment. A moment beyond the mercy and the hope beyond temporal trajectory. Much blessings and honesty.